Hello guys, how is it going? It is Faker coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra video. I just want to start off and say I am sorry for not getting my daily uploads up yesterday for a Runeterra video. Now that is, it's going to be due to the fact that I honestly have been playing really atrociously over the past couple of days. I've been getting really unlucky too and just been feeling a little bit tilted with the game. So I do have to apologize. It's important that I do get daily uploads up if um, it's what I'm trying to brand myself under. But at the same time, I really didn't want to upload something half-assed. It would not be fair to you guys or myself for that matter. So I wanted to bring you guys something with a little bit of substance. And uh, on Sunday, we do tend to do off meta days. So I was playing some, you know, funny decks and a little bit off meta stuff and some completely meme decks. I wasn't really able to get that footage today. But, um, and then yesterday, we were just really unlucky. Anyway, I've been rambling on about that for too long. I don't need to, be, I don't need your pity. I like, I don't need to like make you guys feel bad. I just wanted to like kind of explain the lack of upload yesterday. Anyway, mid-range Bannerman deck. Look, this is going to be a really great deck for any beginner to intermediate players or beyond that to, for any fact. But if you're maybe you have been spamming out burn aggro and you're new to the game, you're sick of playing it, you want to try something different, I can recommend for you Midrange Batman. It's your cookie cutter midrange deck that basically revolves around playing stuff on curve, putting stats on the board and hitting your opponent in the face. Let's jump across, have a look at the deck, talk about the cards and why they're here and what they shall be doing. I just want to say thank you for all the support once again, it means a lot to me. Another reason why I felt really bad for not getting the upload up yesterday, but um, here we are now. I hope you can enjoy the video and I'll see you guys soon. I'll be honest, I am really due for a shave and a haircut. I look like a gremlin. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, it's funny, my wife is a uh, hairdresser and uh, yet I find myself uh, looking like an ape. Anyway, let's talk about the cards, okay? So from the bottom to the top is where I usually like to start. So recently, uh, Midrange Bannerman has been featuring Unyielding Spirit. This card is just literally insane. I don't know what else to it like say about this card. You can slam this onto your uh, Radiant Guardians with Lifesteal in some matchups. You can slam it onto your Fiora, which is probably one of the most uh, cookie cutter moments for this deck at the moment. And then you can basically help slowly guarantee that win condition. Uh, in some matchups, you're gonna find yourself using it alongside Radiant Guardian more. It really depends on your draws though. But I think most of the time this deck also has this win condition through the fact that we just play on curve. We're going to be buffing, playing uh, big stats, cheap mana, curve out. It's just really, it's just really a strong deck. <laughs> so Unyielding Spirit is going to be a 12 of at the moment. Uh, this was a one of, it could be a three of. I think two is fine for now, especially in a deck that, because this specific list is more focused around the tempo. So you can actually end your opponent prior to Unyielding Spirit really being relevant. The champions in the deck that are going to be featured at the moment is going to be Vi. Vi is proving to kind of uh, fit a similar role that Twisted Fate ha is. And that is just being a very strong utility card. Vi is pretty insane. What makes this card so relevant is honestly the tough. I think without the tough, this card is not as good as it is. But it's a, usually most of the time it's a 5 mana. Something with 5 HP, usually it's pretty high if you've drawn it towards the start of your game. And when you play it down the challenger, it's just got, it's got so much going on with this card. This card's super overtuned. I would not be surprised to see it get touched up on the patch, but we'll see how we go. For now, Vi is a great fit. If you don't have Vi, you can play this a deck without Vi. Uh, in terms of replacements, feel free to ask me. I'll double check with you what we should be replacing. But for now, Vi feels like a great fit. It does the role, it suits the deck, and it's a good mid-range card. Uh, Remembrance at the moment is going to be a two of. Because board control is getting pretty insane at the moment in the meta and stuff's dying left, right, and center and being traded into. So Remembrance tends to just be a decent six mana card. We don't usually want to play it for six mana, but you oftentimes are going to find yourself summoning a decent unit, sometimes for four mana, sometimes for three mana. So I like Remembrance. I think it's a cool addition to the deck. It's been recently been featured into it. I like Remembrance. I think it's really great. And also since we have um, Grizzled Ranger, it also has a bit more uh, oftentimes value because Grizzled Ranger is getting double bodies and you usually are trading a Grizzled Ranger off. So that's really cool there. I like Remembrance. Sithria has been a pretty decent staple in a uh, mid-range Bannerman. This allows your chunky units to not get blocked by little spiders and it helps out a lot against any Shadow Wilds decks. They, uh, tend, they tend to just roll them over at that point. Getting Sithria onto the board is a huge threat and it can usually be a bit of a game ender. So Sithria is a great card and a good fit for mid-range Bannerman. 
Radiant Guardian, this is an amazing card. It just fills so many roles. Oftentimes, you can find that it is a bit slow in terms of going against aggro decks, but for the chance that the aggro deck draws a little bit poorly, for that slim chance that you get your Radiant Guardian onto the field, you get that life, so you get that tough. It's a bit of a game breaker, even against other matchups, talking about Karina Control. If you can sometimes stabilize a Radiant Guardian onto the field with an Unyielding Spirit, you can find yourself simply uh, sustaining the lifesteal and the lifesteal can get you there against Karina because they really rely on just that like Commander Lidros and Karina finisher. You can sometimes get there with Radiant Guardians. Really cool. I think Radiant Guardian finds its home in mid-range Bannerman right now. And I don't see this card changing for any X amount of time. Uh, Detain's a pretty cool feature here. Alongside Unyielding Spirit, you can also be using Detain to capture units card low key gets a bit more insane i think this is a card that could be shifting soon uh it really depends what's going to happen to unyielding spirit as uh, we go on but the tain finds a little bit of value you can sometimes even slap it on like your radiant guardian or via these tough units are really hard to deal with and it buys you a little bit of time and helps in certain matchups the tain's cool i haven't had much of a chance to really play around with this card too much but it definitely i've seen it pop off with unyielding spirit and it's pretty obnoxious uh, Bannerman, this is your this is your highlight of the deck. This is why we run such a heavy amount of Demacia. Slapping this down on curve. Let's say you're curving out perfectly. That doesn't too often not happen. Or even if you draw into this late into the game, you're going to be playing a four mana three three. That's most likely going to spread out another six worth of stats. It's just a pretty crazy card. And at this point, if you're hitting Bannerman, whew, it could be quite hard for some decks to deal with this. It did get it did get um tweaked a little bit. Uh, a few patches ago which didn't allow itself to be buffed but still just a crazy card without a doubt bannerman decks are called bannerman decks for a reason this is the reason why repost repost is uh, in this deck in particular it's going to be a three of we have other you know utility cards at the moment especially when we're running like the unyielding spirit and like cards like vi repost is a card that could have been tweaked a little bit earlier but earlier days repost was a three of that was because like there wasn't as many tools and repost filled the void of protecting like your fiora and stuff but now we have like unyielding spirit and stuff uh repost just gets dropped down a little bit still a very powerful card granting barrier to something on the burst is pretty mental the plus three attack does become relevant here and there as well grizzled ranger this is just straight up an op card i don't think we need to talk about this card too much <laughs> Uh, Badger Bear, we're talking about stats, we're talking about mid-range Bannerman. We play three mana four fours, they're really strong on curve, they're really strong on the defense. It's just a very obnoxious stat line for a lot of decks to deal with. If Demacia has access to a three mana four four, we play Bannerman, we play a Badger Bear. Fiora, another cookie card for Bannerman. It really finds its home as a champion card for here. Challenger makes it kind of relevant. Alternate win conditions is strong. And in the end, if you're talking about mid-range decks, it becomes a three mana three three with some utility. It's not a bad fit for this deck. I wouldn't say it uh, needs to be changed, especially with Unyielding Spirit. Uh, dude, that card is just mental. I can't stress that enough. Anyway, and you know, Unyielding Spirit, it's, 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 it's insane what you can do with Fiora now, so it's more of a reason to run her. I guess one thing I will say that if you don't want to run by, you can actually run uh, Garen at a slow bad then. Garen would be just pretty much your best replacement for Vi at the moment if you don't have Vi. At that point, if you decide to run Garen, you'll be full Demacia too, so you won't have to worry about your Bannerman having the off chance of making you feel really bad. <laughs> War Chef's pretty nutty card. Two mana, two, three. Grants 1-1 one, one to attacking supporting ally. I mean, great fit. Wouldn't change this card. It finds its home perfectly here and slots into a really strong two mana slot. Single combat, just insane value card. We'll be using this alongside Fiora. We'll be using this alongside bad trades to make them look a lot better. The card's low key annoying, really strong. I don't think this card ever gets changed in Bannerman unless we find some different kinds of tools or the meta's shift. For now, single combat's always going to find its home. It's always going to do powerful things and it gives you the ability to just win games pretty fast with Fiora on the field. A Bright Steel Protector, another cookie cutter play. It's just really strong, granting barrier to a unit. 
it's just pretty mental, especially in the mid-range list where we run cards like Badger Bear, which is a 3-mana 4-4, four four, or Grizzled Ranger, or even on turn 1, we'll play a Fleetwood Tracker and Granted Barrier alongside it so we can challenge our opponent's units and take a pretty free trade. This card's low-key. It finds its home. Like, there could be some adjustments in the future, and if the meta shifts a little bit, this might be one of the cards that gets tweaked. But for now, it's a 2-mana three, 3-2, three, which grants a la Barrier. It's pretty good value. Fits into this deck pretty well. Rangers Resolve, this is a one of at the moment. This is another card that could be adjusted. Granting tough to a full board is pretty insane. Granting tough to a single ally for a round is even still pretty insane. This card's insane value. But you don't want to oversaturate your deck with Rangers Resolve. It finds its niche scenarios where it's really good, especially when you have more of a board, which in some matchups, you're not always going to have the biggest board. So Rangers Resolve can just be a one of in this list, especially since we are running Unyielding Spirit. Earlier, earlier versions of the list did kind of have more of these, but as time went on, there's a big shift for Unyielding Spirit, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen Unyielding Spirit. I don't want to keep rambling on about it. Fleetwood Tracker, pretty good one drop. Challenge is pretty relevant. Anyway, guys, enjoy the games here, and I'll see you tomorrow. I finally find myself here playing uh, Bannerman. Hmm. So this is the... Uh, Mid-range Bannerman variant, which has Vi and I think Boom Kuruk is in this list as well. I mean, Bannerman's pretty easy deck. Easy deck to pilot. Uh, most matchups. Looking for a curve is quite a pretty much important. You play your one drop, you play your two drop, you play your three drop. It is very straightforward. There is a few intricate turns and alternate wing additions that have to be sorted out after against uh, this guy. We'll just look for the curve still, and we'll actually throw back Bannerman. We usually don't keep Bannerman very often, and then in the opening hand, you could argue against super control -y decks that you might, but in general, if I haven't got a 1-drop or a 2-drop, I want to find those, at least. Sometimes keeping double 2-drops is okay as well, but that would be if you were on this turn right now, which is he's on the open attack, he's attacking odds. I am attacking second, so 2-drops aren't as bad to keep. But still, we like one drops. We like Fleetwood Tracker in the opening hand. It makes a huge difference to the performance of the deck. We have Unyielding Spirit too, which is going to provide an alternate win condition. Possibly in this matchup, the Unyielding Spirit will become relevant if we're fortunate enough to find it. Of course, my opponent is unsure of how to play his first turn, so he may result. Uh, I hope he's not DC'd. I want a competitive game, you know? I'm here trying to get footage, teaching people how to play Bannerman mid-range. Hello there! Just for this, the, the slight chance that my opponent may just be, may not have had a turn one play, I will continue to play this game out. But it's not always often that a deck like his would actually have a turn one play, so I don't feel as bad. We'll be passing for now anyway, we missed a two drop. That really stinks, uh, but we'll see if we can uh, manage. We'll be passing, we're going to play a three mana four four, pretty straightforward this turn. I couldn't think of another play that makes any more sense than that. Not with his hand. Don't ask where it's from. Ask how much. Kill. I didn't factor in the pilfering of cards. That block may have made a bit more sense. And again, I don't want to lose a Fleetwood Trucker over or something like that. Fiora is a good find here. I like playing uh, three mana three threes. I can have an alternate win condition. I'm sitting on single combat. I'm gonna drag this down, try and clear up his board a bit. I don't want the Fiora to take too much damage, and I wouldn't mind pushing four. This is a deck. Of, this deck lacks healing, so I'll take the opportunity to go a bit aggressive here. If he commits a resource to Fiora, I may just let it go through. I think I may just look for the next Fiora because we have like repost single combat repost. Finding another Fiora alongside Unyielding Spirit could be a game changer for us. 
but that will require drawing into those exact cards, which is a little bit unlikely. So we'll see how much we invest into protecting this Fiora. I should probably just allow us to go through. I thought about the single combat. Don't think it's worth it. I feel right to take a damage from this, so I'll leave a B for now. Looks like he opts into a Shadow Assassin here. That's that. This is going to get too much value. I'm going to lean into the single combat. He played a lot of cards. He has a card that summons more cards. A little bit annoying for me to deal with chump blockers without Scythria around. Now, he may be baited, he may be thinking about some ways to take down my Fiora. I have a Radiant Guardian in hand. Can't stop the Pilfer. That's fine. Be passing for now. I think he wants to develop more than that, right? I feel like he's sort of in an aggressive position. He wants to play pilfered goods. He wants to do more things. I want him to kill one of my units off. If he like drops below X amount of mana, he doesn't find himself in a position where he's deciding to kill any of my units. I'll just play Remembrance. But there's no way I allow him to let me play my stuff first. It's a little bit of mind game tactics here, really. Hmm. With four mana, it's not a lot he can do to destroy my unit. He could have like single combat. At this point, I'm just going to play Remembrance. He's going to deny it. Sure. I wonder if there's be better deny targets. I'm going to invest one of my reposts here. Seems a bit sad, but it is what it is. Pretty easy cleanup from my opponent. I probably should have sort thought, thought through that play just a little bit more than that. Not the end of the world. We'll find some refill. Finding by this late, kind of a bit of a stinker. What could be done? Ionia speaks through me. I'm gonna play two, three mana, four force here. Play more for force. He's gonna swing. I'm going to pass. He's going to find random cards, and he doesn't have any plunder cards in hand, which is kind of relevant here. I'm gonna play uh, five mana four five with tough and challenger. First of all. One of is a weird play where I um, buff one of my bears to avoid the stun. I don't think so. I'm actually going to buff this one so we can't take a value block with the uh, this girl. She can, he can of course trade one of his karmas into one of the bigger bears, but I'll take that. We just need a swing, Hail Mary, force him into blocking with some stuff, we're using some resources, there's not a lot more else to see. Attack. Shield up. It's 
too late for you. I'll go for lethal if he allows me to. You cannot escape. Not bad. Press on. You can replay that now if he wants to. Deal me in. I let that fall. Who says I don't share? I'll be it. Pretty relevant. Only I can endure the dragon's fury. We passing for now. Be granting tough. <laughs> What are you doing here, buddy? You have the ability to play two more spells. I don't think you do. And even then, it's not enough. This karma is going to be leveling up. A little bit obnoxious. The answer lies within. Let's do this. Their heartbeats quicken. Conflict is all in the mind. I fight with the dragon's fury. Conflict is all in the mind. The karma just made him swap him. Check this out. Would be lethal if I just let that pass. That's invulnerable. So now I can't die to the make it rain. If he uses another resource to try and kill the bear, I can repost it. He literally needs Will of Ionia here. This is definitely an overcommitment. Game's over. Conflict is all in the mind. He's trying to draw cards to level up Ezreal, but yeah, it's over. Weird game, but we made um quite a fair bit of misplays in that game. I think that turn where I committed the repost on the Fiora was really bad and very abusable. Like it was not hard for my opponent to have an answer there, so that was definitely an overlook. My experience level playing Bannerman is kind of a bare minimum. You know, I think we got there because the deck is just hard to be punished for playing. It's hard to get punished for playing that deck. Yeah, 
Yeah, I was thinking about a Bannerman list that starts to splash into irony here because of unyielding spirits problematic place in the meta right now. I wonder if there's a Bannerman list out there that splashes irony instead. There is. There already has been, but I wonder if it's like a different styled list. I mean, you pretty much want to be running three Will of Ioniers. Not sure how important Deny is. We missed the one drop. I probably should, throw, should have threw back the Bright Steel Protector. I was feeling like uh, I wanted to do a bit of a tougher mulligan. Definitely keeping Bright Steel Protector in the opening hand is super bad. But at least we're on the uh, going second here. We still should always play a Bright Steel Protector to protect our face from aggro, regardless of barrier or not. I would have loved to have hit a one drop, but there's so very few of them in our list. I have my orders. I'm gonna play a th th two mana three two that buffs our Vi. And protects me. Ironically, I think I should be blocking the uh, Saboteur here. It's going to achieve the same amount of damage, but this one can deal more over time. I should be able to deal with the rear guard very shortly. Saboteur finds a bit more value. I take more damage this turn, but hopefully I can deal with it later. So instead of taking three, I took four. And it's incredibly shitty. There's not much else else to say. I have to play a 3 minute 3 2. You're covered. Otherwise, we're going to die to a lot of things. Yeah, this all leads to my mulligan. I made a huge mistake. I don't know why I kept the Bright Steel Protector. I really thought it was going to make a difference, but fuck I do. I can't seem to find much luck lately. And it's really triggering me. First one's free. Okay. Really good. Single combat's really good here. This is gonna allow us to like clear up the board. Allow me to play something, please, so I can punish you. Radiant Guardian would be really nice. <laughs> I'm getting notifications on my uh, Streamlabs, <laughs> even though I'm not um currently uh streaming. Thanks for the follow, buddy. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> you're not you're not gonna hear it or see it, but thank you. Remember the objectives. I thought about uh, playing Repost plus single combat. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just going to play Grizzled Ranger and tank a bit more damage. I can single combat while blocking here. Fuck. Oh, this is so hard. Because I know that if I can make it to Radiant Guardian, the single combat's going to be insane for that. Let's see how much damage this turns out to be. A lot of damage. It is a lot of damage. I'm gonna take a little bit of a risk here. I feel like if I can make it to Radiant Guardian, I'll be good. And that's all happening next turn though. That literally can't be correct. I have to single combat to save three damage now. And I have to hope that I can draw into another single combat. Is it the realistic lines? I'm going to take them. I think it's too, too unrealistic to do the line I'm taking. There's three cards in hand. 
So I believe, and there's definitely different arguments to be made, but it all comes down to what cards he has. I'm not entirely sure I would know. Radiant Guardian is most likely not coming down this turn. He would have to do something crazy here, like kill off my unit. Oh, this is so tough. One girl wrecking crew. I'm going to play Vi and hope that he has not got the burn in his hand. Let's make a deal. Here's the fun part. I think that's a bit of a GG. Make the Empire okay. Clear it out. Who's gonna get in my way? Doesn't really matter what I do. I guess I'll pass in case he outplays himself by single combat. Stop that. Alright, let's mess some folks up. GG. You gotta be kidding me. This matchup should go all right for us. Maybe if we draw a little bit, a little bit better, this hand would have been great against the aggressive deck. But it kind of gets to you sometimes, isn't it? So we definitely play uh, one minute, two one. Okay, it's looking good. The fact that we have Unyielding Spirit 2 in this matchup already, if we can find uh, Fiora, it's going to be insane. Like, this is our win condition against this deck, which is insane to have it so early. Dynamic Beam comes down, no worries. There's a little bit of movements that need to be made to get this Unyielding Spirit onto the Fiora a bit earlier than later, though. But we'll see how our opponent plays it out. I'm just going to play my dudes. My shield is yours. We're going to get buffed to one of the challenger birds. And we'll see if we hit that bannerman. Not quite a bannerman. Open attack feels good here. Could have developed, but I play into a uh, broad, broad Awakening there. I don't particularly want to play into Broad Awakening. I would have just missed out on that damage. At this point, I think I will pass. 
I don't think I will play a Bryce Steel Protector. He'll most likely make some sort of slow play, so I'll pass. If he attacks in, I can go Radiant Guardian, which is good too. Getting Unyielding Spirit onto Radiant Guardian is not a bad choice though, but I think ideally I'd want to hit uh, hit hit it onto uh, Fiora. That's not quite the play I was hoping for. But I'll allow it to happen. He's going to swing in with everything, right? Sure. Go down to 11. I think that's fine. I'll play a 5 mana 5-5 five, five with tough and life steal. He can't deal with it. I'll get some life steal here. Sure. I miss out on some life still, that's okay. I can now probably just go Bryce Steel Protector into Bannerman. You're covered. This is just a protector from nothing. And I'll play this. Bit of a strong board, and now we still have options to land the Unyielding Spirit onto Fiora. Although it's getting pretty late into the game where that might not be a correct play. See if it goes something like Ruination here. Weird lines. I've got 10 mana. I can't afford to like play anything because I'll get punished too much by Ruination, which you could very much be sitting on. So for now, I will pass and I will float all that mana. See if he makes similar moves here in terms of his blocks. Yeah, I wanted him to commit something into it before I played on yielding. In this matchup, I can afford to do that. He's quite slow. So I can be a little bit slow as well. End the round. I can pretty much like... Block into his Ladrosis over and over. Don't have to really be concerned about this unless he has Atrocity. That will be a problem. So I'll have to figure out how to play around that. I need single combat essentially. So for now, I can play Remembrance. Maybe I'll play Bright Steel for now. See if he commits some sort of resources to my board here. I'm imagining that he's sitting on, um, I'm going to Cithria. Remembrance gets a bit more value when we have units die, so I guess I'll wait on that. Cithria just provides base damage for the chance that he hasn't got the cards that he needs. At this point, I can't beat Atrocity, unfortunately. We've just gone down too much HP from that one turn where he went nuts with the spiders. So there's nothing more else to be said other than please don't have atrocity. I'm sick of getting bummed out. Please don't have atrocity. That would make my day. I have atrocity. Here we go. Wow. We seriously dodged a board there. Wow, that was a bit of a dodge. Maybe I should have developed this turn. I was convinced you had atrocity there. But I guess you can't play around everything.
Hello, uh, Ladros. Yeah, I'm gonna play a 5 minute 5 5 that has life still. I think I will play a, another 5 mana 5 5 with life steal that costs 4 mana instead. We'll take tough. That will do. Kind of needed to bank on uh, single combat here. I know he's in top deck mode, I know he didn't have atrocity before, so... Like a flower, Zan will bloom. Behold, the tough's really relevant here. <laughs> I see if you actually survived that. I need to draw into single combat really bad. I'm, like, well lit. I'm gonna play a 3 mana 3 3 with challenge. And I'm gonna play a. Hopefully, we find a Radiant Guardian from here. I'm just playing everything. I don't think there's any reason not to. We have like potential lethals next turn, so I'll take that. Like a challenger. He basically needs to hit right now in that one card right there. It needs to be atrocity, right? For the honor of House Laurent, oh girl, I tried being polite. Please. Oh, yes! Oh, I'm so happy. That's a <laughs> Part of me adds if I play like a troll. TF. I got two TF decks. I have a TF and Jinx. Oh, and the, okay, we'll do the TF Jinx deck. I see. The Von Yip deck also has Twist of Fate in it. What are we versing? So, I would really love to find a one drop. So, I'm going to keep a curve though. Against, which I'm assuming is King Cow Elusives. We just need to hit a one drop, hit a two drop, hit a three drop, and smack him in the face as much as we can. Or it's too late. And hope that he draws kind of averagely. Because he can end this game pretty quick. But so can we if he doesn't deal with that board. But missing the one drop is a bit of a stinker, but we do have Bannerman, so that's gonna help us out a little bit. I'm versing control by the way. The so this guy's a no joke player. <laughs> Hello. I'm not sure if that's control control, but he's a uh, an, an ex still current Hearthstone player. And probably plays a bit more. He tempered out the... This is a yeah, gear. This is going to be fucked up. Yeah, Control's a really good player. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure he's master though, so... This is a bait. It's almost GG. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, there's not a lot we can do here. I guess I tank this attack for now. I don't know if I'm supposed to tank this attack. I probably am. I am the shadow. Only the will survive. <laughs> content. Awesome content. Of course, reversing control. I guess we play Bannerman here. And then he's gonna use, um. He's gonna rally? Is he gonna rally? Let me just check that audio, see how the levels look. Levels look okay. This could probably be turned down a little bit. Full of Ionia. That's so fucking rough. There's almost no point to attack, really. I just lose a unit. That's what the floor wiped on me, dude. Uh, this barrier can make a little bit of a difference, but he'll probably attack first. Do not deny me. Defend our banner. Eh, 
Alright, let's go to block here. If he has the uh, one point of damage, it's GG. <laughs> well played. Holy shit, what a floor. We'll play another game. Uh, adds. That's a bit unfair. It's not unrealistic to have a chance in that matchup. He did drew, he drew really effectively. I unfortunately, I probably should have um threw back the Badger and the War Chefs, honestly. Just a hard mulligan for the one drop because that was like really important in that matchup. Just my luck. <laughs> I feel like I'm one of the unluckiest, unluckiest players in uh, Ruin Terra. But you know, that's just me having a sulk. So take it with a grain of salt. I'm sure there's other players out there that are struggling just as much to do anything in Diamond. Yo, what up, 10? How you going, buddy? Welcome, hello, welcome to Off Meta Sunday, where we do a bunch of Off Meta things. What deck are we playing? We are playing Ads Is, Ads Is, Damasia Piltover deck, which is uh, very similar to Bannerman, kind of uh, with Vi and Fiora, and all that kind of Damasia nonsense. A couple of cards difference, still pretty much the same. This time we're versing Karina Control. I still believe looking for the curve is like really important. However, I do feel like Fiora finds a little bit more value in this matchup because it's an ultra win condition that he might overcommit to destroying. Unyielding Spirit, we can simply hold back until Unyielding Spirit. Not a bad, that's not a bad line at all. Fleetwood Tracker, it might get committed in by a uh, Dynamic Beam. I think most of the time there, if my opponent had Thanomic Beam, he would use it. So if you're not doing that, it means he doesn't have it. And then here, he would Vile Feast 100% if he has that card. It's all about getting the reads, you know. Okay, Mystic Shot, so he doesn't have Vile Feast in hand. It's okay. We're pretty much just gonna sit back with these two cards and so I can play them both in tandem or if I see him at one point in the game overcommit mana on a certain turn where I can play Fiora going into Unyielding Spirit that will be the line uh, but 10 as well after this we are going to be playing a few interesting decks that I found on the Mobilitics page okay this could be the turn where I play Fiora and then he might not be able to deal with it. Let me show you what I mean about overcommitting mana. If I swing in with an open attack, he'll block and he'll feel like he wants to ping this off. It'll be my hope that he, uh, if he plays anything here, well actually Vile Feast plus the Nomic Beam could work, but he didn't, uh, he didn't show me those cards. He can still use the Nomic Beam. I'm pretty sure if I play this, I'll be going into enough mana for the Unyielding Spirit. GTA 5 is free now? You've got to be kidding me. I'm not even kidding. My friend brought that game for me the other day. That's so unfortunate, dude. On Epic Store. Ah, oh, it's Epic Store though. Ugh. Uh, Epic Store's fine. I mean, I, I got Borderlands 3 because I was desperate to play it. <laughs> I could pass here, but I don't see any reason not to just slam down on Yielding Spear with that mana. Yo, soft man. Thanks for the host the other day, buddy. Thanks for popping in, dude. How's it going, this Arvo? Just getting warmed up. We're playing one of Ads's uh, Bannerman decks at the moment. He redeemed his points the other day, so I'm making up for lost time. We had a bit of a fire sale on a deck playing. So I guess at this point, we're just going to start slapping all these minions. And we'll slowly, slowly but surely win this game. We've set up the Fiora, and like, I'm not sure if he's gonna have enough time to get his lead drops online before my Fiora just goes to town. I brought it, but I can't play it on my laptop. Is that because your laptop is a toaster? Should I be playing Vi here? Should I be doing anything to give him resources to play? I'm pretty chill, right? Right? I don't know. I'll pass for now. Yeah, we're chilling. I figured maybe I should be, uh, oh man. We could just, we could just top deck single combat after single combat. 
I mean, I could also play Vi. Just using up my mana, it's going to waste, and Vi is quite hard for him to deal with. Is there any cards you could possibly have to interact with my Fiora? No, I do need it. I do need to develop somewhat of a board because he could choose not to play anything. That's the problem. He could definitely choose not to play anything. So maybe I should have gone Grizzled Ranger here. It's a bit more susceptible to cheap removal. Vi, he has to commit a vengeance into. But I need him to because if he doesn't play anything, then I can't beat him with Fiora. Yeah, I kind of expected as much. I'll chill for now. In my vile face, this spider. It's not a bad play. Again, I think I'll be in that position where I play. I want to keep playing units. But I don't want to play Grizzled Ranger and attack with the scout ability. Because uh, he can block. I can't scout with the Grizzled Ranger at least. Okay. Strike yeah, Vile or Glimpse. I want to put him in a position where he... Ah, oh, dude, I should have summoned this. Oops. Bit of a goose move. It's fine. I should have swung with the uh, challenger unit. Bit of an overlook there. I kind of like didn't really think that through. He cleared it anyway, so like it didn't matter, but uh, rookie mistake. Again, I need to put, I keep, put, I need to keep putting stats on the field. All right, let's mess some folks up. I mean, I'm expecting these plays to happen. At some point, he's gonna have to commit a fucking uh, Laydross. Or Karina. Yeah, I need to be very cautious with a single combat. How much money do I have? 10. And strike. Yeah, I'm taking this single combat now while I can. And I use the tough to keep my bear alive. I'll play another bear. I want to like pressure him immensely because like, he he won't allow me to get it. Did he just lose three Ladros? Unbelievable. I can possibly kill him this turn if he's not very careful. Do I commit double? No, nah, I can't be right. He'll have the answers to these units for sure. I probably could have slow played this turn, but it's fine. Did he actually lose three Ladros? Sorry, uh, two Ladros. Meta deck? Question mark. Come on, bro, dude. Dude, we're just, we're just playing adds his deck because he redeemed to play my deck yesterday. I didn't get a chance to do it. I'm just trying to be fair. We always have sales on play my deck. If he's looking for Ladros and Atrocity, I'm going to need to. Uh, Going to need to find a single combat on the ASAP. TF pot naught. Um, tell you what, tell you what, Sawman. You find me a deck code, I'll add it to the list. I'll do that today. I'll be Mr. Nice Guy. 
Yeah, so man, I've been saying that since pre-expansion. Have you? I do apologize. I'm just gonna play my units that do a bunch of things. My ruination. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, we probably have lethal here, right? I mean, double repost. Almost kills him. It's so hard for him to survive this. It's so hard. If he reacts, I get to react with my spells. I'll see exactly what he commits. I can commit one repost. I need to hold the other one for um when he plays Ladros. We'll see what kind of mana he ends up in. What kind of ranges he ends up at. If he, like, for example, drops a... It's over. It's over. 